I wonder who that mysterious sphinx was that just appeared out of nowhere in the last video. She looks like Beerus, but apparently this is Lada. She's not a god yet, but she does have remarkable power. So this is Earth, she says. Now, where would that relic be on this old miserable planet? This is Dragon Ball Bloodlines, and when we last left off, we discovered that this takes place sometime after the battle with Moro and Goku and Vegeta are kinda old now. They both have beards, show obvious signs of aging, and they both realize that their time is coming to an end. It definitely doesn't all end here with these two though because their next goal is making their sons, the next generation as strong as possible, even beyond themselves as Goten and Trunks are dead set on becoming stronger than Super Saiyan gods. One of their biggest obstacles they're gonna have to overcome though is learning how to tap into all of that crazy power that they have without fusing into Goten. Them never being able to individually go Super Saiyan 3 was always kinda weird to me, but at this point, they need way more than that. I've been enjoying Dragon Ball Bloodlines, and if you have as well, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Jumping into the next chapter, back at Capsule Corp, Bulma is looking at something on a detection system saying, whatever this is, it probably isn't great. Hey, this isn't too far from where Goten and Trunks are gonna be. Trunks, she yells into the monitor. Over the wastelands, Trunks and Goten are sparring when all of a sudden, Trunks gets the buzz on his phone from Bulma telling Goten to just hold on a second. Bulma tells them that someone just showed up on Earth and she isn't able to really see anything besides the life force itself. Can you and Goten go check it out? You two be careful, she says. Goten asks what all that was about, as Trunks tells him that his mom says someone just showed up on Earth. The two fly off excitedly, going straight towards Lada's location. Okay, it shouldn't be too far from here, she says, getting closer to whatever it is she's searching for. I can feel it. Hey, Goten, you see that? Trunks says as the two come to a halt. Uh, yeah, is, is that Lord Beerus? Why would Lord Beerus show up here? And where is Whis? It's at this point that Goten and Trunks have come across Lada for the very first time. She spots them, but considers them nothing but bugs at first, seeing them as no threat at all. Who are you, and why did you come to Earth, they ask, landing in front of her. She replies saying that she doesn't talk to weaklings as Goten and Trunks take this as a challenge and they get ready to fight. Trunks steps up first, charging towards Lada. He fires off a kick starting the battle, but she easily blocks it and returns a punch that sends him flipping backwards. This is when Trunks transforms into a Super Saiyan as Goten watches, but Lada still isn't taking them seriously. Well, let's see what this little trick is, she says, mocking him. He charges straight towards her again, but this time, Trunks is actually able to land a punch and a powerful one at that. Weirdly enough, she doesn't dodge at this one, but instead, it seems all Trunks' punch does is make her angry as she grabs him by the face and slams him into the ground. As Trunks is put out momentarily, Goten goes straight into Super Saiyan and goes in next. With just her tail, she's able to stop him in his tracks and she flings Goten away like a toy, tossing him into the dirt face first. When the two Saiyans get back to their feet, it's obvious now that they really need to work together to beat someone like this. They start the fusion dance, getting about two thirds of the way through, but Lada appears between them as soon as they attempt to complete it and sends them flying away with the shockwave. Well, I wish this was a little more fun, but I've had enough child's play, Lada says, as Goten and Trunks are down now and they've even fallen back to base form. She soars high into the sky, raising an arm in the air, as a destructive energy blast forms in her hand. I hope you both enjoy this, she says. Before she can release her attack though, a sword comes ripping into the frame that she's nearly able to stop before piercing her, but it does stop her attack. Who dares interrupt me, Lotta roars. You again, she says. As she sends the sword flying back, I realized that it was a really good time for you guys to leave a like on the video if you are enjoying. When the sword returns to his rightful owner, we see that Tapion has appeared and seems to have saved Goten and Trunks. But what exactly is the meaning of all this? 
I won't let you interfere, Tapion, she roars, as she creates an even bigger energy ball above her head and throws it, telling Tapion that the relic is hers. Tapion releases a single slash with his sword, creating a sort of crescent attack that destroys her blast on contact to the surprise of everyone. I shouldn't have been surprised, Lada says, as the smoke begins to clear, still using that old man's techniques. So boring. By the time she's able to see Tapion again, he's already on the ground healing Goten and Trunks. The two boys regain consciousness, Tapion asking if they're okay. You clearly didn't know who you were up against, he tells them. But we had her, Trunks says, getting back to his feet. Goten agrees, saying that they're the defenders of Earth. You're pathetic and not worth any of my time, Lada corrects them. But if we do cross paths again, it will be your end. And then she flies off, retreating for the time being. You boys have some work to do if you're the defenders of this planet, Tapion tells them. Take my advice. Be careful the next time you come across her. She's dangerous. Tapion takes his leave as well, leaving no time for questions, as Goten and Trunks are just left there, kind of stumped at this entire encounter. Well, whoever those two are, I hope they don't cause any more trouble, Goten says. This is when Trunks speaks up, however, saying something very surprising, actually. He tells Goten that maybe they should train separately for now. We've pretty much always had each other in battle, he continues. We've never learned to take care of ourselves. That fighter was so strong, we couldn't even perform fusion. And if we had, I'm not sure if we could have beaten her anyway. If we went off on our own journey and became stronger, if we ever did need each other, we'd be unstoppable, Goten agrees. Not having hard feelings about Trunks' idea because their fathers would have said the same. Exactly, Trunks says. Go off and become the best you can. It wouldn't be as good as me, but you know. Yeah, okay. Do you know what you plan on doing first, Goten asks. Trunks says that he's not too sure, but he definitely has a plan. Take care, Goten tells him, as Trunks gives him a thumbs up and flies off on his own journey. I gotta find that guy, Trunks says. As Goten flies off as well and begins approaching the city, he suddenly feels something out of the ordinary. That's an incredible power, he says, turning around before heading home. What could that be? It's almost familiar, but changed. He flies off in the direction of the hills when he sees a giant explosion going off. Upon reaching the wastelands, Goten is surprised by who he sees here. Uh, Yamcha? Is that you, he says, as we then see an aged Yamcha who honestly looks like he's been training quite a bit. Seeing Yamcha after all of this time definitely feels nostalgic, especially in his old look. So what brings you out this way, Goten, he asks. Well, believe it or not, he begins, I was actually on my way to go ask Master Roshi to train me like he did my dad back in the day. Wait, isn't that Master Roshi's shell, Goten says, pointing behind them? Yamcha clenches his fist as he reminisces about Master Roshi and all the training he put them through and everything he did for them. It actually is, he says after a short pause. He gave it to me after, well, wait, what happened to Master Roshi, Goten asks. Well, it's one hell of a story, Yamcha says. I'll tell you if you agree to spar with me. Huh? Well, Trunks and I are off on our own doing our own training, so I guess I have some time. Think you can keep up, he says? Huh. Power up to your limit, Yamcha tells him. All right, Goten tells him, but don't complain if you get hurt. But this is when Yamcha disappears, reappearing behind Goten again, telling him once more that he better power up. Goten transforms into a Super Saiyan and creates immediate distance between them, being caught off guard by how crazy fast Yamcha is, asking exactly when did this happen. Yamcha chuckles, saying that after helping the Galactic Patrol take out Moro's goons, he decided to stay on the force as a patrolman. I've been busting my butt taking down intergalactic baddies with Jocko, he says, and I'm not too sure exactly what he means by that, but I'll leave that be. Whoa, this whole time I thought you were just slacking off, Goten says. Yamcha takes off again with this impressive speed and lands a gut punch on Goten that stuns him. 
In the next panel, he just sends Goten flying into the air with this crazy Superman punch. And then he flies above Goten and kicks him back towards the ground, sending him crashing into the dirt. Ouch, my head, Goten says, sitting back up. Can't even think straight. Damn it. Yamcha is going kind of crazy right now. He's outspeeding and overwhelming a Super Saiyan with ease. And it's just looking like a warm up for him. He hits Goten with his Wolf Fang fist attack, and on the final strike, he stops. A single hand in Goten's face, having not broken a single sweat. Goten falls back to his base form again, his face showing it all. Yamcha definitely proved his point, but what kind of training did he do to be able to go toe to toe with a Super Saiyan? 